This is section 9.6, the alternating series. So what is an alternating series? If you'll notice, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. That's all to an alternating series. The signs of each term alternates. And you will know you have an alternating series when you have a negative 1 to the k plus 1 power, or it could even be negative 1 to the k power, because as k increases, it's going to alternate from positive to negative. So that's your indication in summation notation if you have an alternating series. So what's our first thing we need to learn? This section is pretty short. So the alternating series test. So you've had tests for convergence for a lot of different things, like a different rules, comparison test, limit comparison test, integral test, divergence test. Um, there's a bunch of different tests. For an alternating series, it becomes a lot easier because here is the alternating series test. So how do you know again you have an alternating series? You have that or just a k. If you start with k, you start with a negative term, but usually you start with a positive. But either way, it's an alternating series. So here are the necessities. The terms are non-increasing in magnitude. That means the absolute value of the terms are not increasing. It's either the same or getting smaller. Okay. And the second thing, the limit of the terms approach zero. Now, you could say the terms are decreasing, but non-increasing allows for each term to be equal to each other. So that's what the non-increasing does. But if the terms are strictly decreasing, you could say the terms are decreasing for your justification. So conditions, alternating series, Technically, that's the first condition. You have to have an alternating series. So I'll circle that. So in the alternating series test, you would say this is an alternating series whose terms are either decreasing or non-increasing in magnitude. You have same magnitude. And you can say the limit of the terms is zero. Or you can put it all together. Here is an common way written on justifications. This is an alternating series. Alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. So that's just another way of saying it that summarizes it very quickly. So you have your three conditions, alternating series, the terms decrease in magnitude, and that 2, 0 is getting the limit of the terms of 0. So that is a basic summary if you have those. And also note, instead of decreasing, you could say whose terms are non-increasing if that's the case. But those are the three things. If you know those, then the series converges. So it's a really easy test. It's probably the easiest one you will have. So when you have an alternating series, you just check to see if the terms are decreasing in magnitude to zero. Now, looking at the harmonic series alternating, this is a theorem that you're going to have. This is an alternating harmonic because it's the same as a harmonic, except you have alternating signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And the theorem says an alternating harmonic series converges. And of note, the regular harmonic diverges. That diverges, but when you alternate signs, now it converges, and you can prove that. How can you prove that? You'd have to show that these terms are non-increasing or decrease in magnitude and they approach zero. Well, you could take the limit of this and quickly find that that is zero. 
and you can take the derivative of that, the absolute value, because in magnitude you ignore that. If you take the derivative of that, you can prove that the terms are decreasing. And by using the alternating series test, you can prove that the harmonic series is convergent. So we are going to use alternating series test on these three. So let's do it. So first, is it alternating? Because of that, you know it's alternating for part, for part A. Next question, are the terms decreasing in magnitude? So if you look at 1 over k squared, is that decreasing? Quite obviously it is because the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. But if you want to prove that, you could just take the derivative. y prime, that's k to the negative 2, would be negative 2 over k cubed. And you can argue since k is always positive, because it goes from 1 to infinity, that y prime is always negative. So you can say that's negative, therefore y is decreasing because the derivative is negative. So now you proved it's decreasing in magnitude, and then you say, hey, let's find the limit as k goes to infinity of negative 1 over k squared. Technically, you'd have to use a squeeze theorem, but you could clearly say this equals 0. Now, why is it the squeeze theorem? Because this is between negative 1 over k squared and 1 over k squared. Hopefully, you agree it's be between, or actually, it should be equals. So that's less than or equal to that and bigger than or equal to that. Since this goes to 0 and that goes to 0, therefore that must go to 0. So you have shown all conditions for part A. So you should write, and I'm going to copy and paste this because I don't want to rewrite all this. It's just too much. I'm going to paste it right here and show you how you would conclude this. I would pay since this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. Therefore, the series converges. All right, that's it for the first example. So you show it's alternating series, you show the terms are decreasing in magnitude, and that the terms approach zero, therefore convergent. So let's look at the next one. Let me erase all this. All right, we're doing letter B. All right, you can see right away. Let's get this here. Let's, we can do this. I can do this. Let's put this over 1. So if I write like this, this would be n plus 1 over n, or k plus 1 over k, where k starts at 1 to infinity. That's so ugly. Let me rewrite this. Whoa. This is freaking out again. This program's been very sketchy lately. Wow, it's not even fixing it here. Let me see if I can delete that. Okay. So the top is one bigger than the bottom. And you have a negative 1 to the k plus 1. So that's my series. You can double check, put in 1. Put a 1 there, that becomes positive. You get 2 over 1. Put in 2, 
that's going to be an odd power, so it's going to be negative 3 over 2. You're getting that. So it's alternating series, clearly. Are the terms decreasing in magnitude? So let's look at that. You can see that they're, well, we can see a couple things. We'll do, we'll do two things. Um, let's let y equal the magnitude of the terms. I don't know how to write. So what's the derivative of this? I'll do low d high minus high d low over low squared. And we will notice that the k's cancel on top, leaving negative 1. Well, this is negative. So we do have decreasing always. Because that's always positive, that's negative. So we have decreasing. Now the last step we need to do is find the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 1 over k, which is 1. So the terms are not approaching 0. So this fails the alternating series test. All right? So that one fails. So we know this thing diverges. Even by the divergence test, since the terms don't approach 0, we know it diverges. So it fails that one. Let's go to C, U, C. Let me get rid of all that. OK, we know it's alternating series. That makes it alternate. Now, if you want to check if it's decreasing, we can, OK, there's a couple things we'll look at here. Um, we know it's decreasing. I could do this. Ln of k over k, what's the derivative? Low d high minus high d low over low squared. That's 1 minus ln of k over k squared. Well, the bottom's always positive because it's squared. Um, ln of k, um, we're going to get. We're starting at 2. So ln of 2, we were starting at 2. ln of 2, that's going to be less than 1. Let me think, let me think. ln of 2, base 2, yeah, that's going to be less than 1. So that's going to be positive. But when we put in 3, that's going to be bigger than 1. So from 3 on, it's going to be negative. So we're going to be decreasing. Let's check the first couple of terms. Um, let's put k equals 2 in magnitude, so we ignore the plus and minus. Um, we're going to have ln of 2 over 2. Oh, I'm doing, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm checking magnitude. The next term, let's plug in 3. I'm going to have ln of 3 over 3. I know the rest of the way is decreasing because the derivative, whoopsies, the derivative is always negative for k bigger than 3. Um, let me do this on a calculator. Let me grab my calculator real quickly and double check. So we got ln of 2 divided by 2. That's 0.34. I should use some and three, four, seven, about. And then let's do ln of three divided by three, point three six six. Okay. So here, I actually don't even have to do this. Let me talk. It's not decreasing for the first term, clearly. It's getting bigger. We saw that with the um, derivative also. So let me do this. For k, this is negative 4 k bigger than or equal to 3. Now, 
Remember, in a series, if a series diverges, adding or subtracting an extra term will not change anything. So the fact that it, for k greater than 3, this is decreasing. And the last step, the limit as k goes to infinity, ln of k over k by growth rates, we know that's 0 because that's the slowest growth rate. Or you could do L'Hopital's and find that 0. And because of that, you could do the squeeze theorem and put it between negative 1 and positive 1 and get the same result. But that's 0. So we have the terms decreasing in magnitude to 0, except for the first term, it's increasing. But you can ignore the first term because adding or subtracting a single term does not change whether something converges or diverges. So I can conclude since this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude 0, therefore the series converges. I just have to start at 3 instead of 2. The extra term won't change anything. So that's it for that one. All right, let's keep going. Let's do the remainder. Okay, this is a concept that's going to become very important, and students struggle on this all the time. And this is very important that you kind of understand this and how to find remainder, or also called error. So remember, if you have an infinite series, it goes forever. But I can call the first n terms added up the sum of the first n terms, s sub n. So I'm going to rewrite this as the first n terms, and then I have the rest of the terms still. I'm going to call all the terms after the first n term the remainder, the r sub n. So what we have here is an infinite series is the first n terms plus the rest of the terms added up, but all those extra terms are called the remainder or error. And let me show you why it's called that. So you could estimate an infinite series using the first n term terms. It's not going to be accurate. It's going to have an error. What's going to be the error? Well, whatever remaining terms are left off. So we also call the remainder the error of the series, assuming the first n terms are the approximation. So if you want to know what the remainder is, it's the whole series subtract the first n terms. So the actual is all the terms. Subtract the first n terms. That gets you the remainder or the error of, an, of a series. Whether it's alternating or not, it's the remainder. So we have this theorem. Let's look at this. We have an alternating series, an infinite alternating series, and it converges, and this is important. Alternating series is terms that are non-increasing in magnitude, and it's convergent, so the terms approach zero. So to use this theorem, you have to state that the series is alternating whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. That's all required to use this theorem, okay? If the remainder is what I just explained, then the absolute value of the remainder, or the error, is less than a sub n plus one, which is just the next term, the next term in the series. So that's pretty easy, and I'll kind of explain why it's just the next term. Maybe I should do it with this example here. Yeah, I think I will use this example. So the remainder, here's what they're saying. I have this infinite series. I'm going to use the first n terms to approximate. What is the remainder or the error? They're saying the remainder or error is going to be less than this term. And why is that? Now, I should have plus minus this. It doesn't matter. 
I should have plus minus, but yeah, I don't have to. So in the alternating series, if this were a plus, then you could have a minus, then a plus, then a minus. Well, look at this. If you want all the rest of the terms, think about it. If you take that and you're going to subtract the next term, it's going to be smaller than that, the rest of the terms. But you might say, but then you're going to add the next term. But you're adding something smaller that was here. So if you think about this logically, this term will be, the absolute value of that term will be bigger than all the terms added up. Because like I said, if this is positive, you're going to subtract something. It's going to get smaller. So the rest of the terms will be smaller than that term. Then you might say, well, what if that were negative? Well, then you're going to add something. When you add the next thing, you're going to make this smaller in magnitude. Because this was negative and you're adding, so magnitude is going to be smaller. So the rest of the terms added up in magnitude will always be smaller than that term. So the rest of the term added up is the error. The error will always be smaller or equal to that term. That's what this theorem is saying. If you want to find the remainder, whoa, that's not what I wanted. The remainder is always going to be smaller than or equal to the next term in the series. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of examples. And you might think that, wow, this is um, kind of complicated. I don't want to do this. But this is a very common question in FRQs. So you have to know this. And the other one we're going to cover next chapter is even crazier than this, but very similar. So they're telling you we have a series for LN. It's equivalent to this infinite alternating series. Now, how many terms of the series are required to approximate LN2? And you don't want your error, you want your error to be less than 10 to the negative 6. Okay. How do we do this? So we have to look at first, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to write it out. This series, the terms are alternating and they decrease in magnitude to zero. Because look, clearly they decrease in magnitude and they're going to approach zero, one over infinity is zero. So you'd have to state that this series is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. So let's look at this thing. You probably recognize this as the alternating harmonic series. Now we already know. Did I write that right? Okay, let's keep going. Negative one to the n plus one over n plus negative one the n plus 2 over n plus 1 plus dot dot dot. So all I did is I wrote the first four terms of the series, then the nth term, so you plug in n and you get that, then you plug in n plus 1 to get the next term and you get that. So that's my series. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to use the first n terms to approximate the series, but the remaining terms are going to be your error. But we just learned that the error will be less than or equal to the next term that's unused. So that's going to be our maximum error. So that's what we're going to use in our statement to prove this. So the remainder, <clears throat> which we call that, or I'll call it error, is less than or equal to the next unused term. 
which is 1. And since we're doing absolute value, you don't need the negative there, over n plus 1. Well, they wanted the error to be less than 10 to the negative 6, right? So you want this to be less than 10 to the negative 6. So now we have to solve for n. That's a 6. So 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over a million, or n plus 1 must be less than 1 million. Whoops, wrong spot. We'll subtract 1 from both sides. Oh, I forgot to flip my inequality. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. When I reciprocaled it, I was supposed to flip. So n must be greater than 999,999. Therefore, n must be 1 million in order to have an error that small. Okay? So that is example A. Now I have to do example B. Let me erase all this stuff here. Let me review that real quick with you. So I need to state something that I didn't, but the question was asking, how many terms do I have to add up so that the remainder or the error is less than 10 to negative 6? So basically I have to add up n terms and then the remainder or error, they want it to be less than 10 to the negative 6 or 1 1 millionth. So the alternating series theorem, the remainder theorem, says that the remainder will be less or equal to the next unused term, the n plus 1 term. So if I'm using the first n terms, the error is going to be less than that next term right there. But I should state this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero first. I need to state that here. I'm not going to write that. I'm telling you, it needs to be here. That this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. Therefore, the remainder or the error is less than the next term. What's the next term? It's right there. And it's absolute value, so you ignore the negative on top. It's, that is the maximum error. And I want that to be less than 10 to negative 6. So I reciprocal both sides. But if you do that with inequality, that switches. I subtract one from both sides. So the number of terms must be greater than that. So it must be greater than that, which is 1 million. So 1 million is a minimum number of terms so that the accuracy of ln of 2 is within 1 1 millionth, or the error is less than 1 1 millionth. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Let me erase all this stuff. So if n equals 9, so you use 9 terms of this series, are added up, what's the maximum error in approximating the value of this series? The maximum error. So let's look at this again have negative 1 to the k over k factorial, which is negative 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can write the first nine terms for you and show you what's happening. So I'm going to go up to 9 minus 1 over 5 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial minus 1 over 7 factorial plus 1 over 8 factorial minus 1 over 9 factorial plus 1 over 10 factorial minus dot dot dot. That's the series that's going on. So what are they asking? Um, if you add the first nine terms, what's the maximum error committed by approximating so my alarm clock to get up. 
So according, so I would say this, I'll write this out this time. This series, it's an alternating series. Whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero? I should say this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in zero to mag in magnitude. Okay, clearly these are decreasing, and in the limit it's decreasing to zero in magnitude, and it's alternating. So. This is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. So because of that, and using the alternating series error theorem that we just had right here, remainder theorem, that the maximum error is the next term in the series. What's the next term? Well, after the first nine terms, that's the next term. Therefore, the error or remainder which equals and it's actually equal to this is you know what they were supposed to tell you that this is the series for e to the negative one they didn't but the actual value okay I'll tell you this series is the series for e to the x but it's actually e, actually e to the negative x, negative one. So that's e to the negative one. The actual value is the actual minus one. I'm not sure, actually I'm not sure what they're doing here. The maximum error commit is approximately the value of the series Oh, you know what? Let me erase this. Sorry, guys. I don't want to confuse you with this right now. So the error is just the next term. They're just saying that this series is represented by that, but let's ignore that. The error is the next term according to the theorem we just had. So we are approximating the first nine terms. So the error is going to be less than or equal to that term. So I want to use a less than or equal to 1 over 10 factorial. And that's it. That's the answer. The maximum error is 1 over 10 factorial. And that's going to be that one. Um, I need one more topic and we'll be done. Okay, absolute and conditional convergence. So this happens when you have an alternating series. So let's look at what's saying, and once you get this, it's really easy, once you get it. So if you have an alternating series, and you absolute value the terms, so you, you get rid of the alternating, make it just all positive. If that converges, by definition, the alternating series converges, we call it absolutely, okay? But the next situation, if the absolute value of the terms diverge, meaning they're all positive and it diverges, but the alternating series converges, then we say it converges conditionally on the condition that it alternates. But if we had the absolute value, it would diverge. So that's conditional convergence. So this is a definition that you have to know they added that a couple years ago to the AP test and they usually test on this and it's very simple if it's confusing to you you need to process and think because what's more likely if you have an alternating series I'm just gonna make one up okay this is an alternating harmonic series now Let's look at this. Okay, so okay, that's our series, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. Okay, 
what if we had this? What if we absolute valued a sub k? What would that look like? Well, then you would add them all because you're absolute valuing them. You no longer alternate. Well, you know this diverges because you know it's a p series with a p of one. It diverges, or it's an alternating series. Excuse me, or it's a harmonic series which you know diverges. We had a theorem, so that diverges. But this one converges, and we just did that because this is an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude to zero. Therefore, that converges. So you should see that it's more likely that an alternating series will converge because you're adding, subtracting, where a non-alternating is more most likely diverge. So what is this definition saying? Well, if the absolute value of it converges, if that converges, it doesn't in this case, but if that were to converge, obviously the alternating will also converge. So we say it converges absolutely. Okay, no matter what, it's going to converge. But they say if the absolute value doesn't converge, diverges in this case, but the alternating does converge, then we call that converges conditionally on the condition that it's alternating. So that's what it means, absolute and conditional convergence. Okay, this one's pretty obvious too. If the absolute value of the terms converge, then the, in, the alternating series will also converge because that's going to be smaller because you're adding subtracting. Um, and they're saying if the alternating diverges, we know the absolute value will also diverge because that's got to be bigger because they're all the same sign. So that's pretty obvious. I don't think you even need a theorem on that. It's like pretty, pretty obvious. OK, this is the last example. We're almost done. We're going to look at the convergence of these, absolute convergence or not. So we always test the absolute value first because if the absolute value converges, then we're done. We know it converges absolutely. So let's look at this. We're doing the absolute value, which is 1 over k to the 1 half. That's a p-series. What do we know about a p-series? We know that it diverges, right? This is a divergent p-series. Because a p must be greater than 1 to converge. So divergent p-series, we know it diverges. But what about this? This is an alternating series. We know that. Is it decreasing in magnitude to zero? Yes. Um, alternating series decrease in mag to zero, therefore convergent. So the absolute value diverges. The alternating series converges. Therefore, this converges conditionally. So that has conditional convergent convergence. Okay, so that's A. Let's just keep cranking along and get done with this. B. Let's look at the absolute value of this. So the absolute value would be 1 over k to the 3 halves. I know this is a convergent series. Why? Because p is bigger than 1, therefore it converges. So therefore, since the absolute value converges, this converges absolutely. All right, let's keep going. Couple more. All right, the C1 is kind of a weird situation. 
let's look at the absolute value of this. Now, we're going to have to look at this in a different way because the top, we can look at absolute value. Okay, let's do this. And for time constraints, I might, let me do this. Now, without the absolute value, let's take a look at this, okay? So, this is between these two. All right, so this approaches zero as k goes to infinity, and that approaches zero as k goes to infinity. So these terms are decreasing in magnitude to zero. All right, the bottom is, top is stuck between negative one and one. The bottom keeps getting bigger and bigger, so it's decreasing magnitude zero. So we know that this is going to converge. Now hold on a second, because the top might not, it might not actually be alternating. It's actually not alternating because the top doesn't necessarily go from plus to minus. Um, so we can't use the alternating series test for this one. Um, but we can do this. This converges because it's a P series with a P bigger than one. That converges because it's a P series with P bigger than one. So actually, this must converge because it's between those two. So we could say it converges absolutely. Um, that's kind of a weird thing going on here, but I'm not going to dwell on that. That's just kind of a weird problem. I want to move on to D. All right, D I think is pretty straightforward because we could just look at the actual terms, the limit as k goes to infinity of negative one to the k, k over k plus one. That does not equal zero. Therefore, the alternating series diverges and therefore the absolute value must also diverge. So this is just a divergent series, straight out divergent. All right, that's gonna be it for that one and uh, we're done for this lesson. Bye.